So, besides the celebrity, uh, the Facebook celebrity default and the pop hybrids, what kind of other types of art are you thinking about exploring maybe in the next, say, six months? Is there anything you have in mind right now? Anything you've just been formulating? Yeah, I have a couple of sculpture ideas. I've got, like, a book of ideas that I've just been kind of collecting over the, you know, well, for years. But over the past year, I've been so busy working on the Little Prince project that I wasn't able to, you know, bring some of these other ideas to light. I've had this idea about making a totem pole of cheeseburgers <laughs> for a while, and I'd really like to figure out a way to make that a reality in the next year. It would be a, 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 st a cultural statement, a statement on the American, uh, uh, the, w the way we've always appropriated cultures and especially the Native Americans' culture, how we've kind of just, you know, taken over their land and, uh, well, you know, that's a whole other political yeah. <laughs> conversation. <laughs> but it would be poking fun at the American need to borrow other people's cultures and make them our own. And the ultimate American totem to me is the cheeseburger. That's just a symbol of America to me. And, you know, the giant, multi-layered, excessive cheeseburger, you know. <laughs> the, just our penchant for excess. And, and I'm not saying, you know, I, I, for me it's, it's an ambiguous thing. It's like I, I don't necessarily, I'm not putting it down because I love a good cheeseburger. Mm -hmm. But... It is kind of repulsive, on the other hand, <laughs> you know? So, a lot of my work is like that. It's ambiguous. It's like, am I making fun of it, or am I, like, praising it? And that's, and I don't necessarily have an answer. And that's very sacred to, you know, the first peoples of America, and, and turning it into uh, what some may see as a joke. But, I don't know, I think it could be an important piece of art. I would love to do it in a way that looked like a traditional totem carving and, and painted in the traditional colors that are, are used by the Native Americans. And, and you know, growing up here, I, I, there's totem poles, you know, around. I was the actu actually the mascot for my high school was the totems. I've always been kind of fascinated by their artwork anyway, and just the crisp lines and the, you know, solid colors and just the, the precision of the art is really, you know, kind of influential on, on a lot of the stuff I do already. So it seems, you know, even though you're taking serious works of art and you're doing them about, they're, you know, you're doing them on popular culture subjects, do you think maybe that for some um, people that it might, have, might, in a way, it, do you think that in a way people might take your art less seriously because of the subject of your art? That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, it took me a while to say No, that. that's, I, <laughs> I totally get that. And, and yeah, I kind of do feel that that might be the case in some people's, you know, uh, opinion of my work. Why would you say that? What, would, what, what is it about that? that you, well, I think would, traditionally in... In the, in the realm of contemporary art, the use of popular culture is considered lowbrow, or, you know, it's maybe less than. Of course, there's the whole pop art movement, Andy Warhol, and, and you know, leading the, the charge, and there's tons of wonderful art historical artists, you know, that have made work using popular culture. But I think, generally speaking, from the art world perspective, using it blatantly or in a way that maybe has been considered derivative or already done, you know, I, that's the thing that I, I, I try to I try to throw new twists on it and try and uh, approach things in, in, in ways that I haven't seen before. It's just what fascinates me and always has, <laughs> you know. grew up in front of the TV. It's, that is a struggle for, for me because that's what is, you know, that's what inspires me. It's, at the same time, it's, I'm trying to make, I'm trying to make contemporary art. I'm not trying to make 
disposable art. Have you ever tried your hand at maybe just producing more traditional art just yeah. for the sake of, you know, getting more shows or getting more exposure? Not or... for the sake of that, because anybody can, I mean, I, I think it's important to really, like, address what you're thinking about and and do it in a way that's going to make you interested in doing it again. <laughs> or, you know, investigate it further, or... It's got to be your own th fingerprint, you know what I mean? It's, I, I can't make myself do an oil-on-canvas painting of a landscape or an abstract painting just for the sake of, you know, getting a show at a gallery that shows that kind of work. That's not interesting, and that wouldn't be me. I tried my hand at just about every kind of art there is, and I, you know, I used to paint really personal, kind of surrealistic paintings that I called diary paintings, which were, you know, I went through a really kind of a dark period of my life, and I did this series, uh, you know, that was, they were really personal paintings, and I, and I sold a couple, and I felt odd about even selling them, and that, at that point, it was when I decided that I wanted to make a switch. And um, I started just making these, I did start making abstract paintings. Just, you know, that meant nothing really to me. <laughs> because it was weird to sell a part of my, what I felt was part of my life. It felt weird to sell that. So I, I still wanted to make art, but I wanted to like figure out a way to do it where I was okay with letting go of it. So it started out basic from the, from, you know, the bottom up and I just started making these abstract paintings of circles overlapping. And from there, it's, you know, it's, it's from that point it has grown into something way more personal. And I think I've gotten to the point where I'm okay with selling work that is uh, intimate and personal. Not necessarily speaking of Le Petit Prince Project in itself, but what about Prince inspires your art? Well, you know, it, the way he approaches music uh, and the way he's able to jump from genre to genre and <clears throat> really master every, you know, type of music that he's interested in, that has been the biggest, my biggest influence since I was, you know, 12 years old. It's like, man, this dude just made this kind of album, and now he looks like a completely different person and made a completely different album. And next year, he's going to do it again. And that is just so amazing to me. And that's, that's what I've always aspired to do, is to make as many different types of art as I can, but that are somehow threaded together in a stylistic way that you're going to know it's, 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 a, it's by Troy Gua. It's like, why settle for good? What's the point? Anybody can do good. You know? If you just put everything you have into what you do, that's going to be the best, no matter what. Yeah, that was uh, Tells from the Crib wasn't, that wasn't my show, man. Def Comedy Jam at 10, and Tells from the Crib at 10. <laughs> I remember that, That's man. all you needed to do yeah. on Friday nights. <laughs> Sit in front, and I wasn't supposed to be watching it, but you know, I used to sneak. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> turn it down, they start cursing. Mm -hmm. They curse and turn it down, turn it down. <laughs>